Wow, what a beautiful sweater. It's so yes, stylish. Thank you, Broski. Sweater as well. Wow. I know. Beautiful, Thanks. Beautiful color. Thank you. I am one of the most beautiful girls in the world, and I want to marry you because of your sweater. It do be so like that. Do you ship yes. worldwide? It is, we do ship is worldwide. Is there a 15% discount? Yes, there's a 15% wow. discount. Oh, hey there, Broski. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm going to show you how to play Softly Spoken by Poom Weeper It. Exciting announcement, there's now 15% off of all merchandise if you use the code BROSKI. Wow. So, that's very dope. And 15%, that's a lot. It's more than 10 and more than 11. Keep that in mind when you buy my merch. Anyways, let's get into the song. I'm going to show you the song I just talked to you about. It's quite a difficult song, so I will first play the song in its entirety and then explain some more difficult things in a bit more detail afterwards then I will also show you some interesting second guitar tips so yeah it will be a long but exciting video I also have some people to thank for donating I'm very sorry I forgot in the last few videos I will I will thank you at the end of the video I will mention your names because I'm very happy and grateful that you donated uh, let's get into the song now oh and also follow me on Instagram then you're very cool I had heard somebody say once so you know just to keep that in mind so the song is just in standard tuning, you don't need a capo or anything like that, so we can go directly into the song. So that's how to play the song, a lot of tricky parts I must say, I will first explain those tricky parts and then I will show you the second guitar tips as well. If you want to see like a complete version where you see both guitar parts played at the same time, check out my cover channel, I'll leave a link in the description. But yeah, first of all the first chord is this, E minor 9, it, I think it's one of Poom Weeperit's favorite chords, definitely, he used it a lot. And this also nice. 
You can do two things with this chord. This chord you can also play the E, uh, the open E string like this, or you can leave it out like this. There's room for that. Um, I think Poom Reaper probably changes it. I think in the studio version he doesn't do that that much, but live he does. But so yeah, just like that. And then the chord is like this. You have to stretch your index finger and really make a bridge out of your fingers, you could say, so that they don't mute each other out, especially the the especially the D string. You want that to be hearable. And then he does. Then he does this chord, which is a bit tricky. You have to stretch your index finger like this. Um, so these two notes need to be hearable, and these two as well. So so you can do. It's you. It's easiest if you stretch your finger on the bottom four string. So, but you only play, of course, two of those. But that might help. And then it's important that you don't play this A note. Like that, it is quite tricky, it's just practicing a lot and also maybe using your fingers might be a bit more useful. I try to play it with my plectrum but I think he does it with his fingers so that might help being more selective in which notes you play. So, And what also might be tricky is this hammer on. I think he even manages to put a bit of vibrato on this pinky, but that's quite difficult. But yeah, you have to... Like that, you really have to hammer your finger on, so... With quite... Yeah, not really force, but... You know, with some um, precision, you have to... Place your finger. You're really doing this. But then, in a chord, so... Like that. Quite tricky, but there's not really a different way to play this chord, I think, so... Yeah, this is just you know if it's really too difficult you can also just keep on playing the E minor 9 but you do leave quite a bit of melody out then so that's a bit sad but you should just do whatever suits you the best of course then it switches a chord again it goes to this A major 13 I think or the A, A13 chord so and then it becomes quite difficult as well because then you have to switch your finger position quite a bit you can leave your index finger and your middle finger on the same spot but you do have to switch with your index finger with your ring finger and your pinky now there's one other way to do it and i think he does it in this way live you can also just so you don't move your finger to over here but you just you just only played these three notes, as you can see the chord diagram, so... I think this sounds closest to the studio version. And yeah, it's, it's just quite tricky, you have to practice with these chords a lot. Um, a useful tip might be is to play a chord, and then leave your fingers off the fretboard, and then play the chord again, and then like moving your fingers further away from the fretboard each time you try to play the chord, just as a practice, so... That might make you use these chord progressions, and of course, and of course, play these chords first slowly as always. But yeah, and in between these chords, you can sometimes hear these sort of rhythm and muted hits, like yeah, I, I've talked about those quite a few times. So you just have to relax your left hand or use your palm to mute the strings and then hit the strings like that and if you're using your fingers it's really the same thing but then then you're hitting your palm at the exact same moment as you hit this part of your finger so like that okay and then the next chord is this one is a lot less tricky i think so So you do place your thumb here. You don't necessarily have to place your thumb there. You can also play it without the bass note because I do think the bass player is also playing this note. So especially if you're with a band, you don't need this bass note here, but you can do it. So 
I get a hammer on from here. So. And sometimes when he switches from this chord to the next one, he just. So. And then. Nothing too difficult, and then. Again, he really doesn't mind using his pinky in a lot of difficult ways, so he does that again. Um, you should really mind that you don't play the bottom string the first time you hit this chord, so. Instead of. So. That's how it should be. Uh, playing with your fingers might be a bit easier for this, you can just switch between your thumb and the other note, so. So that's when uh, finger picking might be a bit more useful. It really depends on what works best for you, what's easiest for you. It's difficult to exactly say how to use your pinky like this. It's really creating some strength in your pinky. So trying to use, try to use your pinky in, in songs that you're playing or in soloing. It's really all about you know, practicing a lot, trying it a lot. And also don't worry if it doesn't sound immediately good. If this doesn't, if you can't hear every note immediately, don't worry, you will in the end. It's not that it doesn't sound to have, it doesn't have to sound perfect immediately. Anyways, then it goes to the the chorus. Oh no, then it then it there's a small little riff. Not too difficult. You have to slide the first note. It goes quite fast, but you will get the hang of it. And then it goes to the chorus, and this is quite tricky. Not because the, not because of the chords, because those are really exactly the same as before. But the timing is very tricky, and it's really weird. The timing it it's almost goes a bit slower, sort of, and then it speeds up again, and only in a fraction of seconds. I'm not too great with ry with rhythm, so I wouldn't be able to tell you how this exactly works. But I do know that it's quite difficult, and the best way to play the rhythm guitar is to really almost ignore the rest of the, the instruments because they seem to start in a different sort of tempo you could say. Um, so yeah, just try to play along with me or try to play along with studio version and then that will help as well. It's just, yes, a very tricky part but again repetition is key. So Then it really does the exact same thing as before with the chords, only not playing the E minor 9 but exactly starting at the A 13 chord. Then it goes to this small solo you could say, a very interesting solo, very nice one I think with mainly using chords and a small riff played over on top of them. It goes like this. It can be a bit tricky because it goes quite fast, but I'll show you what he's doing. He does. Like that. And then with some. He does something like this. So. Right, it is important to keep your hand going so. It's all about doing this and then really choosing when to hit the strings and when not so. Those are the notes that should be played and then. This hammer on a put off might be difficult again using your pinky, so. Maybe doing this with your index finger might be easier, so. And then it will be. Something like that, so I will do it slowly again. And you can try to vary it a bit with the rhythm, that's what I'm also doing, but you can make it as complicated as you want. I also do these 
Again, these muted hits in between, like... You can do that by resting your left finger, so left hand. Something like that. But yeah, just try what suits best for you. And then it goes, as I just said, and then... Ba oh, basically the same pattern as played over here, but then on a different spot over here. And then again, it's the same pattern as the B minor 7 over here, but then play that A minor 7, so... And then it repeats itself really, and then it sort of goes to... Which isn't too difficult. And then there's this piano part, and I, and I decided to play just the E minor 9s over here because they sound really close to the sound that the piano is creating, so you can do that as well. In the live version, uh, Poon Reaper isn't playing anything. Also in the studio version, by the way, so if you have a band, that might be useful, but if you're playing by yourself, if you don't have any friends like me, it might be useful to just uh, play an E minor 9 there. Then a lot of things repeat themselves that we've already been through together and then at the end there's something different you have this part I'll show you what I'm doing it's the same as the first chord that we've seen but then a different rhythm so And with this chord, it's alright if you play this bottom A string. I don't think he does, but it works as well. So don't worry too much about that. You can just stretch your index finger over the the bottom five string. So again, these muted hits in between if you can. Otherwise, you don't have to do that. Then that's the 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 lead guitar, the rhythm guitar, you could say. Now I will show you also the second guitar tips. Um, First beginning with this one, which you will hear in the verses of the song. So that's how to play that. I don't think it's too difficult. Again, you can do these muted hits in between. You don't have to, so you could do. Or you could do. That adds a bit more rhythm to it, so you do. In between, you in between when you hit the strings, you do. By resting your left hand. Relaxing your left hand, you could say. So not putting them on the strings, but just on top of them, so. Like that. And that's the same for the B minor 7 as well over here. Like that. So that's the, the part for the verses. Then at the outro you also have a very interesting and very classic Poom Reaper style guitar riff which I will show you now.
when it goes fast, it's not too difficult. It's really a classic Pum Reaperit style outro riff, really funky and really straight to the point and in the minor pentatonic scale. So I think, yeah, minor pentatonic scale. So again, you have these fake hits in between. I think you can also do it without, so. So it goes something like. And then play it a bit faster, so then. This is also a very classic thing that Pum Reaper does, so you do that by hammering on your finger and then putting it off, so and then very fast, so uh, slowly it should sound like and you just put off by basically 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 almost strumming the same snare but then with your ring finger now so you're really putting it off so therefore the the G string still gets some sound so but you can also add some vibrato and you can add a bit more rhythm into it by doing these fake strums and also then hitting the other notes that you shouldn't play but those are muted so Like this, you hear this note. This is the one. This is the note that should be playing, but you hear these muted notes because I'm resting my finger on top of the B and the E string. So, so, that's how you can get a bit more rhythm to it. That's that. I really hope. That was clear. Now I really have some people to thank. So now I want to thank some of you that have donated uh, to my PayPal and my Patreon. That really means a lot to me. I'm very sorry if I mispronounced your name. There were some quite difficult ones. And as you might have noticed, English is not my native language at all. But I will try. I want to give a huge thank you to Emerson, Ranan, uh, Aditya, Tyler, Adolfo, Sam and David. Thank you so much for your support in this way. That really means a lot to me. And also thank you for watching and I also really hope to see you the next time.